good day, the state television company of Western Armenia represents all the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast, indigeneity as a fundamental strategic element in the affirmation of the rights of the Armenian nation, National Council, Sons of Western Armenia, Gevor Kajan, on the issue of the Armenians of Western Armenia, Azerbaijan's abduction of the resident of Artsakh under the protection of the ICRC is a war crime, array MFA. Members of the U.S. Congress call for immediate action to resolve the deliberate and calculated crisis created in Artsakh. Come out of the cave. Let's support Western Armenian television. The defense of the rights of indigenous peoples has been a struggle waged by the National Council of Western Armenia for 20 years. The participation of the Western Armenian delegation in the 16th session of the expert mechanism on the rights of indigenous peoples held in Geneva from July 17 to 21, 2023 marks a continuation of this effort. Mr. Armenak Abrahamian, president of the National Council of Western Armenia, presented a complete dossier on behalf of the organization to the UN authorities. He emphasized the study's focus on the impact of militarization on the rights of the indigenous Armenian people of Artsakh. Mr. Abrahamian alerted the international community to the end to prevent the militarization of an indigenous territory that has been part of the state of Western Armenia since 1920. Following the intervention of the Azerbaijani representative who described the Armenians of Artsakh as an ethnic minority, the latter discredited itself in the eyes of the international community by ignoring the work accomplished by the indigenous peoples that led to the declaration on the rights of indigenous peoples of which the National Council of Western Armenia was a stakeholder from the very beginning of the drafting of the declaration. Mrs. Lydia Markosian also spoke about the study in relation to indigenous languages in a context where every 15 minutes an indigenous language dies as a result of discrimination and domination. Amalia Astrid noted that the delegation from Western Armenia took part in the march which began in the nation place and ended on the lake shores of Lake Geneva, where an exhibition was held to mark the centenary of the Descahe mission to Geneva in 1923. Having been granted the privilege of accompanying the delegation of the National Council of Western Armenia to the UN for the second year running, I know that the National Council has been in the vanguard on many issues, including the question of autochthony, which is very much on the agenda in the light of recent developments affecting the territory of Artsakh. Gevor Kachian was born in 1971 in Anjar, Lebanon. He received his primary education in the local school Yaraj and Galus Gülbengen. In 1984, he entered the Zarehian School of the Catholic State of the Great House of Cilicia, from which he graduated the same year. He attended the music school Barsakh Kanachian in Lebanon. His teacher was the director of the Armenian group Sebastiner and the artistic director of the EPC Harutun Topikian. As a soloist, he performed in the choir. Or Hali of the Catholic State of the Great House of Cilicia, Komitas of Hamasgain, Barur Sevak, and Faiha of Tripoli. He was the leader of the choir forward of the city of Anjar, participated in the competition, Barzakh Kanachan organized between 14 schools and won first place. Gevor Kajan has had solo concerts in Armenia, Artsakh, Vienna, Qatar. In the fall of 2020, he participated in the 44 day war in Artsakh. The commander of the second volunteer company, Meher and the freedom fighter of the same company, Christopher Artin, died during the liberation of the strategically important hill. For many decades, the Turkish state has been fighting against the fact of the genocide against the Armenians and its international recognition, not only in the political sphere but also in the scientific field. It should be stressed that the so-called official Turkish historiography is in fact identical to the distortion of history, especially when it comes to the genocide committed against Armenians. Turkish historiography's mandate to create history in a new way and in a way that suits them to falsify was given by the founder of the Turkish state Kemal Atatürk and this matter was under his direct control. The Turkish historiographical attack on Armenians became particularly active after 1965 and this process continues to this day. Even today, the question of the genocide against the Armenians is the number one issue in Turkish historiography towards which it pursues a systematic policy. In the context of all these articles and interviews with Turkish historians who take a different view from the state thesis are quite interesting. Since to 
2005 and particularly during the discussions that began after the signing of the Armenian-Turkish protocols, certain Turkish historians and analysts with a more objective approach have begun to publish articles and give interviews on the question of the genocide against the Armenians, in which sometimes you can find remarkable revelations and confessions. It should also be noted that the documents mentioned were mainly found in the relatively freer Turkish press. We present the opinions expressed by several Turkish scientists on the genocide against the Armenians, which bear witness to current developments in a small section of Turkish scientific circles. The full article is available on our website. The Armenian Minister of Foreign Affairs has issued a statement concerning the abduction of an Artsakh resident by Azerbaijani border guards, stressing that this practice by Azerbaijan is a flagrant violation of international humanitarian law and a war crime. The statement said in detail, it should be noted that this action by the authorities in Baku is a direct implementation of the statement made by the country's president on May 28. The installation of a checkpoint on the Berzo road will be a lesson to the Armenians of Artsakh. The they will show their heads down and the continuing threats which the Armenian side has repeatedly made has alerted international partners urging them to condemn this and similar statements. This action by Azerbaijan directly demonstrates that Armenians' long-standing alarms about ethnic cleansing reflect the seriousness of the existing mortal dangers. Let's recall that on July 29, 68-year-old Vagif Khachatryan, who was traveling from Artsakh to Armenia with serious health problems, accompanied by the international Red Cross Organization for Treatment was abducted by representatives of the Azerbaijan Border Guard Service near an illegal checkpoint on the Berzo Road and taken in an unknown direction. Later, the Azerbaijan Prosecutor General's Office issued a message stating that Azerbaijani border guards had arrested him and taken him to Baku. Vagif Khachatryan has presented with trumped-up charges in Azerbaijan. Members of the Armenian Affairs Committee of the U.S. Congress have issued a statement calling Baku's blockade ethnic cleansing of Artsakh and calling on the international community to take immediate action in response to the Aliyev regime's month-long blockade of the Berzo Road. The international community has stood idly by for too long as this crisis has escalated to a critical point where tens of thousands of lives are now at risk. Meanwhile, President Aliyev has suffered no consequences for his brutal campaign to forcibly expand Armenians living in Artsakh from their historic lands. This is the definition of ethnic cleansing. The international community must use every diplomatic tool available to end the blockade, reopen this vital lifeline and avert a catastrophic humanitarian crisis. We call on the Biden administration to act immediately and help bring a peaceful end to this premeditated and calculated crisis. Azerbaijani forces continue to persecute, arrest and kill people in Armenia and Artsakh while falsely claiming Armenian territory as their own, the statement said. Knowledge is the means to rid ourselves of darkness, of ignorance, the search for truth, the understanding of true reality has been one of the problems of human cognition since ancient times. This perception shaped the worldview of every person, every nation. Learn wisdom and forever distinguish the true from the false. Our ancestors remind us of the importance of distinguishing the true from the false by Matayan Kur Mihir Haikazun. According to Plato, the role of an enlightened person, a philosopher, a lover of a reason is to return to society and educate to enlighten others. However, it is not easy for an individual who has attained high consciousness to make his ideas perceptible to those in darkness and present them with the new truths. For unaware of the existence of a truly better life, those chained in the cave prefer their chains of darkness, of ignorance, unwilling to break free. What's more, a wise man who can see well in the darkness of a dark cave after the extravagant light of the sun is considered blind. We have one woe, always to the light, and we continue on our way. So come out of the cave. Western Armenia Television, true to its principles and its viewers, continues its uninterrupted work with new approaches. As you already know, our television does not engage in self-promotion. It mainly broadcasts political and other contexts related to the history, present and future of Western Armenia, as well as information raising various issues. We also present the political transition of the President of the Republic of Western Armenia, the government, the National Assembly and other structures in a transparent and accessible manner. Dear compatriots, with your support, the possibilities of our television will be further expanded and strengthened. We are strong together. 
Thank you for your time and attention. Now the musical part, the Armenian folk song. <laughs> Ciao a tutti.